In this video, we are going to have a look at the Panasonic Lumix S Pro 70-200mm f2.8 lens. We are going to have a look at its image quality, overall performance, and we are going to also do some comparison with the f4 version of the Lumix S Pro 70-200mm lens as well. Hello, good morning everyone, Richard Wong here, welcome back to the channel. Panasonic has recently released the Lumix S Pro 70-200mm f2.8 lens. So the 70-200mm f2.8 is usually quite a workhorse lens for a lot of professional photographers, no matter you shoot sports or you shoot portrait, weddings, events. A lot of professional photographers would love to have one of these lens in their camera bag because it's really versatile. So in this video, we are going to have a look at its performance including the image quality and we are also going to do a bit of comparison with its little brother, the Lumix 70-200 f4 lens. Just see how these two lens compare with each other, which one is the better lens out of these two and also what is the major difference between these two lenses. Let's start by talking about the build quality and body design of the lens first. As you can see, this is not a small lens at all. Compared to the F4 version, it is quite a bit bigger, it's quite a bit longer and also a little bit thicker as well. The front filter thread for the F2.8 version is 82mm, while the one for the F4 version is 77mm. So you can probably see that it is quite a little bit bigger than the F4 version. The biggest difference between these two lenses is actually the weight. The f2.8 version weighs about 1570 gram while the f4 version weighs just under 1000 gram so the f2.8 version is about 60% heavier than the f4 version. There's quite a big difference between the weight of these two lenses. Both lenses are weather resistant and you can see the zoom ring is near the bottom and the focus ring is at the top and both of them has the um, focus ring clutch design so if you pull it down then it will change to the many focus mode and then you can push it back and then it will be back to the auto focus mode. Both lenses have the removable tripod mount which is Arca Swiss compatible so that is very good if you are using a tripod that uses Arca Swiss plates. And there are a couple of things that the F2.8 version has that the F4 version doesn't have. If you look at the side here, we have the focus limiter switch here at the top and then the, um, the IS switch instead of just the on off switch on the f4 version this one has uh, mode 1 mode 2 and off so you have a bit more adjustability with the f2.8 version and also um, near the front of the lens you have the button here which is the custom function button and there are actually three of them one is here and one is on this side and one is at the bottom so that means no matter you are shooting in the portrait or the landscape positions you can customize this button to one of your favorite feature when paired with a Panasonic body. The lens I'm using to do this review is borrowed from Panasonic. Uh, as you may be able to see in the video, there are actually quite a few um, marks, paint marks, scratch marks on the body of this lens already because the lens has already been used by quite a few different photographers for different things, shooting events, shooting some landscape photo. So that's why the lens already got quite a few battle scars on the body. But despite that, uh, everything still works perfectly fine with this copy. Uh, the autofocus is still very smooth, the focus ring and the zoom ring are both very smooth. That tells me the build quality of this lens is definitely very good and very durable. The minimum focus distance for this f2.8 lens is 95cm which gives us the maximum magnification ratio of 0.21 that is slightly lower than the maximum magnification of the f4 version which is 0 0.25 okay now let's talk about the autofocus performance of these lenses with the f2.8 lens when i am taking photos in the single autofocus mode the autofocus performance is just fantastic the autofocus speed is lighting fast 
is very smooth virtually no noise at all and there is also very minimal amount of hunting so every time pretty much when i point it to a target and i half click the shutter button or press the af on button it would just immediately snap onto the target having said that the f4 version the autofocus performance is also very good on a bright sunny day there really isn't too much difference between these two lenses both of them are very fast and very smooth i think the biggest difference is when you are shooting indoor or anywhere that the lighting when it start getting dim the f4 version you will notice the autofocus speed will start dropping a lot earlier than the f2.8 version Panasonic has already released two teleconverter, which is the 1.4x teleconverter and the 2x teleconverter. And I have tested um, quite a bit with the f2.8 version. And I would say when you are shooting on a bright sunny day, the autofocus performance with either of these teleconverter attached is virtually the same the autofocus speed is still very fast even with the two times teleconverter attached at least on a bright sunny day of course when um, the environment starting to get a bit dimmer darker then you would notice the autofocus speed and also the um, amount of hunting would start become not quite as good once you have one of the teleconverter attached especially the two times teleconverter attached but if you are shooting on a bright sunny day the difference is almost not noticeable when shooting photos in continuous autofocus mode the performance is also very decent here are a set of almost 50 photos shot in afc mode using a panasonic lumix s1 when i checked the photos at 200 percent zoom i was surprised that the focus is actually spot on in every single photo when shooting video in continuous autofocus mode, the overall autofocus performance is also pretty decent. The transition is very smooth. When I mount this lens on a Panasonic S1 running the latest firmware, face detection, body detection seems to work quite well. It managed to track my body movement quite smoothly and the overall focus tracking performance is pretty decent. One thing I was quite impressed when testing the continuous autofocus is the amount of focus breathing with the f2.8 lens seems to be very minimal. Look at this uh, sample footage. The focus was changed from about 1.5 meter or so to infinity and then back to 1.5 meter or so. As you can probably see, the amount of focus breathing is very minimal even when I change from 1.5 meter all the way to infinity. In comparison, the f4 lens, if you look at this sample footage, I think the overall focus breathing control is still very good, definitely better than most lenses in the market right now. But if you compare it to f2.8, you can definitely see that the f4 version does have a little bit more focus breathing. Next, let's talk about the image stabilization. This f2.8 lens has optical image stabilizer built in. If you use it with a Panasonic body, which has the in-body image stabilizer, then you will have the dual IS feature, which will give you even better image stabilization result. Panasonic claims that the dual IS is up to seven stop effective, which is pretty crazy figure. I did some tests at 200 millimeter focal length just to see when I mount this lens on the Panasonic S1, how is um, the result of the dual IS compared to no image stabilization at all. And this chart summarized my result. Looking at the chart, I would say my result shows me that the dual IS is about 5 stop effective. While this is not a 7 stop effective as claimed by Panasonic, but this is pretty much in line with all my previous image stabilization tests. My result is always 1 to 2 stop lower than the factory cam figures. And 5 stop effective from my personal test is probably one of the best results that I have ever got. And that test was about taking photos. And when you are taking video using this lens, 
if you turn on the Boost IS feature, then the result is also very impressive. Look at this footage that I shot when I have this lens at the maximum focal length, which is 200 mil. And I was basically just standing there, hand holding the lens and nothing was supporting my body or my hand. I was just standing there and holding the lens like this. And it was a little bit windy as you can probably see in the footage, quite a bit of wind. And look at the result, it almost like I was using a tripod or at least a monopod because the footage is very very steady so that is also very impressive. That definitely shows you how good is Panasonic's image stabilization technology because I don't think I have tried another full frame camera that can give me similar kind of performance when I'm taking video at uh, 200 mil hand holding the camera. Okay, next let's talk about the image quality and as usual, we start with the image sharpness first. First at the 70mm, look at the center sharpness. The f2.8 lens is already very sharp at the maximum aperture f2.8. When I stop down to f4, it doesn't actually make too much difference in terms of the image sharpness. Compare it to the f4 lens, I would say the f2.8 lens is definitely sharper. Um, I'd probably even say the f2.8 lens at f2.8 is marginally sharper than the f4 lens at f4. And now if we move on and look at the corner, the f2.8 lens at f2.8 is also sharp, but if you stop down to f4, it definitely does improve the image sharpness a little bit. If you stop down further to f5.6, the corner sharpness would improve very slightly. And if we look at the result from the f4 lens, I would say at the f4 aperture, the f4 lens is slightly softer than the f2.8 lens, but this time the difference is smaller than when we comparing the center sharpness. And now let's look at the center sharpness at 135mm focal length, quite similar to what we saw at 70mm focal length. The f2.8 is already quite sharp at the maximum aperture f2.8, but I do notice there seems to be a very tiny amount of chromatic aberration near the high contrast area, which would disappear when I stop down to f4, which makes the result from the f4 definitely looks a little bit sharper. The f4 lens is again not as sharp as the f2.8 lens at f4, but the difference is really tiny. And if we look at the corner at 135mm focal length, the f2.8 lens again is already very sharp at f2.8. When stopped down to f4, the image sharpness only improved by a very small amount. And once again, the f4 lens seems to be slightly not as sharp as the f2.8 lens. I would say at this focal length, the f2.8 lens at f2.8 is actually slightly sharper in the corner than the f4 lens at f4. And now let's look at the result at the maximum focal length 200 mil. At the center, with the f2.8 lens, the center sharpness is already very good at the maximum aperture. And if you stop down to f4, then the center sharpness become razor sharp. It's just very sharp at f4. But this time when I compare it side by side with the f4 lens, I would say at f4 aperture, both lenses, the result looks very similar in terms of center sharpness. And now look at the corner sharpness at 200mm focal length. With the f2.8 lens at the maximum aperture, I would say the corner sharpness is also pretty good, but I definitely can see some noticeable improvement when I stop down the lens to f4. The f4 lens is slightly not as sharp as the f2.8 lens at f4 aperture, but when both lens stop down to f5.6, then they are virtually the same in terms of corner sharpness. And next, I test the image sharpness with the teleconverter attached to these two lenses. Let's start with the 1.4 teleconverter attached to the lens at the maximum focal length 200 mil. That would increase the maximum focal length now to 280 mil. With the f2.8 lens at the maximum aperture, which is now f4, because the 1.4 times teleconverter make the lens one stop slower. So at the f 
for Aperture, um, the center is definitely a little bit softer than previously without the teleconverter. Stop down to f5.6 would improve both the sharpness and also the contrast quite a bit. With the f4 lens, the maximum aperture is now f5.6 and at that aperture, the result is very similar to the f2.8 lens. If I zoom into 200% zoom and compare them side by side, then I would say the f4 lens is probably a little bit softer, but the difference is really minor. And if we look at the corner, the f2.8 lens at f4, the corner sharpness is actually surprisingly good. I don't think it's actually any softer than the center sharpness at the same aperture and with the 1.4 times teleconverter attached to it. Stop down to f5.6 would improve the image sharpness a little bit. And if I compare the result with what I got from the f4 lens, I can see the result from the f4 lens is slightly softer at the corner at the same aperture setting. And finally, I attach the two times teleconverter onto these lenses, and that means it increased the maximum focal length on these lenses to 400 mil. With the two times teleconverter attached, there is definitely some noticeable drop in terms of image sharpness. With the f2.8 lens at the maximum aperture, which is now 5.6, because the two times teleconverter make the lens two stop slower, the center is definitely quite a bit softer than all the previous tests. Even when I stop down to f8, the center still remain a little bit soft. Surprisingly, the f4 lens with the 2 times teleconverter at f8 seems to be slightly sharper than the result from the f2.8 lens with the exact same settings. And now if we look at the corner, with the f2.8 lens at the maximum aperture f5.6, the corner is definitely a bit soft. It gets a little bit better when I stop down to f8, and with the f4 lens, the result at f4 is also very similar to the f2.8 lens at the same aperture setting. When it comes to distortion, both lenses have very very minimal amount of distortion throughout the whole focal length range from the 70mm all the way up to 200mm. Look at all these test photos that I shot with a brick wall. Even when there is a straight line near the edge of the frame, normally that's when you can easily see the distortion from the lens. But even that, um, with all the test photos I've shot using both these lenses, I see virtually no distortion at all. So that is very, very impressive. When I overlap some of the test photos that I shot with both lenses at the 200mm focal length, it seems the field of view at 200mm from these two lenses is pretty much identical. In terms of vignetting with the f2.8 lens at the wide and 70mm focal length, at the maximum aperture f2.8, there is some noticeable vignetting. Stop down to f4 would improve a lot. And when I stop down to f5.6, then vignetting is virtually not noticeable. With the f4 lens at f4, vignetting is definitely noticeable. At the same aperture setting, the f2.8 lens has much better vignetting control. But if you stop down the f4 lens to f5.6 onwards, then vignetting is not really noticeable. And now if you look at the vignetting result at the maximum focal length 200mm, with the f2.8 lens at the maximum aperture f2.8, there is some noticeable vignetting at f2.8, but it's not terrible. It becomes much better when stopped down to f4, and once again, it becomes not really noticeable when stopped down to f5.6. With the f4 lens, vignetting is also noticeable at the maximum aperture f4. I would say um, the f2.8 lens at f4 is slightly better in terms of vignetting control compared to the f4 lens. When you stop down to f5.6, then vignetting is also not really noticeable. Overall, I think both lenses has decent vignetting control, but if you compare the result from these two lenses, the f2.8 lens definitely has less vignetting when shooting at the same aperture. Okay, next let's look at the bokeh and first look at the result I got when I was taking this photo at the f4 aperture. 
Despite the F2.8 lens actually has 11 curved aperture braid while the F4 lens only has 9 curved aperture braid, I would say the bokeh from both lenses look very very similar. The bokeh is smooth with nice transition from the bokeh to background. But the photos I shot with the f4 lens does show a little bit more cat's eye effect near the edge of the frame, while the f2.8 lens remained relatively run even near the edge. One thing the f2.8 lens definitely has advantage in terms of bokeh is that it is a one stop faster lens, which means you could easily dissolve the background more and have some bigger, nicer looking bokeh when you want to completely dissolve your background. If you love having sun star in your photos, then you probably want to choose the f2.8 lens because when you stop down to the minimum aperture f22, the f2.8 lens does give you better looking sun star compared to the f4 version. And not only that, with the f2.8 lens, you could already get some nice looking sun star effect when you are shooting at around f11 aperture setting. While with the f4 lens, I find that I normally have to stop down one stop more under the similar shooting condition. For example, this one is f11 and with the f4 lens, I have to stop down to f16 to get some similar looking sun star effect in the photo. Lens flare is very well controlled by both these lenses. Even when I was shooting directly into the sun on a bright sunny day, I still get very minimal amount of lens flare and ghosting when shooting with both these lenses. And even when I did the nighttime lens flare test, the amount of lens flare and ghosting from both these lenses are still kept at very minimal level. Chromatic aberration is also very well controlled. I shot a number of photos that I purposely shot into some very high contrast scene and when I check the photos, um, look at the photo at 100% or even 200% zoom, there is just very minimal amount of color fringing. Okay, here are my test results with the Panasonic Lumix S Pro 70 to 200 f2.8 lens and the results compared with the f4 version. To be honest, I think they are both very good lenses. If you ask me which lens should you buy, I think it's a very difficult question to answer. Uh, probably it just really depends on what you really want and also what kind of photo you shoot. For example, if you are a sports photographer, I would probably recommend the f2.8 version just because um, if you're shooting on a bright sunny day, then it doesn't really matter. But if you are shooting indoor sports events or when the light level is not really good, the f2.8 lens would allow you to shoot at a fast aperture speed without bumping up the ISO too much. If you travel a lot and want a telephoto lens review, then I would probably recommend the f4 version because the overall image quality of these two lenses are very similar. And while the size, um, the difference is actually not that huge, if you ask me, because um, neither of them are like a tiny lens, but the weight difference is quite big. Um, this 60% heavier than the f4 lens as I mentioned at the beginning so the f4 lens is probably the better lens if you want to do a bit of travel with your camera. If you are a wildlife photographer then I think I would definitely recommend you the f2.8 version because um, a lot of wildlife photography is done um, either very early in the morning or later in the day when the sun is not quite as bright. With the f2.8 lens not only it allow you to keep shooting at a lower ISO level, it also helps the autofocus performance when the light become quite dim. This is especially true when you are shooting with the teleconverter because that will increase the focal length that means it increase your shutter speed and that would also decrease the effective maximum aperture of your lens so the faster f2.8 lens is definitely the better lens if you are into wildlife photography and if you are a landscape photographer, I think it's a bit hard to choose. I would want to recommend the f4 lens because um, the sharpness of the f4 lens is very similar to the f2.8 lens, but it's a much smaller and lighter lens. 
But on the other hand, the Sunstar from the f2.8 lens seems to be quite a bit nicer than the f4 lens. So it really depends on what you prefer, but um, both lens are very good for landscape photography. And if you shoot weddings, quite a lot of time you'll be shooting at pretty dim venue for the wedding reception or the wedding ceremony. Then the one stop faster f2.8 lens would definitely make your life a bit easier. And for filmmakers, I would probably also recommend the f2.8 version because the focus briefing is virtually non-existent with the f2.8 lens. So I have just shared with you my opinion about which is the better lens for a few different type of photography. But those are just my opinion and I would like to hear about what is your preference between these two lenses, which lens would you choose, why is that and what sort of photography do you do the most? Just leave a comment below, let me know and I will check with you in the comment field below.